Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. And we're moving to the topic for today. The Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress have issued a 14-day ultimatum to the federal government over the non-implementation of the 16-point agreement both parties reached after the removal of the petrol subsidy. In a statement signed by the two leaders of the two labor unions, uh, uh, Joe Ajero and Festus Osifo on Thursday, the organized labor expressed sadness that despite the passage of time, the majority of these crucial agreements remain unmet or negligibly addressed, indicating a blatant disregard for the principles of good faith welfare and rights of Nigerian workers and Nigerians at large. The labor unions said that the agreement which were reached with the federal government were focused on addressing the massive suffering and the general harsh socio-economic consequences of the ill-conceived and ill-executed IMF World Bank induced hike in the price of PMS and the devaluation of the Naira. Uh, to have this conversation and joining us over the phone is Dr. Dayo Kayode. He's a political technocrat. Good morning, Dr. D. Thank you for joining us. Yes, it's my pleasure being with you this morning. Good morning. How are you today? Uh, we're doing all right. All right, let's start this yeah. way. The NLC and the TUC are saying that the federal government have not been, you know, very truthful with accomplishing the 15 listed agreement. Uh, that they, you know, the the point where they came to a compromise during their conversations, the last time this conversation came up. Uh, how do you react to that? What's your take on, you know, these, uh, the fingers that the, the Trade Union Congress and the NLC are pointing at the federal government? You see, between you and me, NLC, with all intents and purposes, has lost its credibility. And I will start from the issue of palliatives after the removal of subsidy. When this excruciating suffering of Nigerians started at its highest, what have we been able to do? Where, where was that agreement signed? Based on that 300% increase in inflation in Nigeria then, where is it? What have we done? Now you are now talking about 14 days of tomato. How many days of tomato did you give federal government at that time? What did you do? Even, even at the expiration of that tomato, what happened? You went for a meeting. Only God knows how the water passed, what kind of water passed, or that the bridge at that meeting. I am now talking about 14 days uh, 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 ultimatum. Nigeria, Nigerian workers don't believe in Nigeria again. Even in NLC. The NLC we are having now is different from the NLC of Paul Modu. It's different from that NLC of uh, Alaji Sumonu. It's different from that of NLC of uh, Bafia. What we have to do? What do you have to do? We are talking about the aliens. In those days, when NLC sneezes, the whole country will catch cold. What do you have to do? They are just being tossed there and there. Just being tossed there and there. Let them just go and sit down. Look at him. Look at him. Asking for one million naira minimum wage. Still, the old type of agitation. Of Alaji Sumonu and the Baba of Modu. Why can't you change your narratives? So you will never be clamoring. The energy should change its narrative to a kind of a scientific agitation by coming up with a template of, of sustainable minimum living wage. When you come up with that template, any, any, any slight increase in anything, you go back to that template. Instead of all 
All right, Doctor, are you still there? I'm there with you. All right, so um, let's even assume that this idea, as it were, of the thinking through the one million naira minimum wage takes effect. What would be the rippling effect in the economy? I mean, the um, the resultant effect in the economy, considering the fact that market women now might decide to say, okay, yes, you guys are not earning one million naira minimum wage, depending on their level of um, category in the civil service. And we decide to now increase the cost of our commodity. Will we not still come back to the same level where we are, where Josh, we have fewer money chasing Josh, over so much yes, goods? Yes, Josh. Josh. Yes, exactly please. what I was saying. Part of the variables that I be considered in in my scientific narrative mm. has to do with that. Because there is no way you will increase worker salary, and all that will not increase their own uh, house rent. True. The market women will not increase this. Some of will not increase that. But everybody will have been taken more care of. Mm. Everybody. So that any slight increase, any slight increase in either pump price of petroleum, in either pump price of petroleum, uh, and even, even these uh, communication service providers, uh, the light or whatever, we also affect it. So the moment government understands that, yes, Nigerians have become wiser in coming up with scientific interrogation. They will, they will sit up. All right. They will sit up. So, so and it will definitely, it will definitely cut inflation because by increasing, by increasing salaries, you know that yes, you have to make also. Uh, 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 other citizens who are in the private sector to also to also enjoy such. These are the things I've been talking. I've been talking since all these days. Stop asking for minimum wage. Ask for sustainable. Underline that sustainable. All right. Minimum living wage. Okay. Now. Any distortion, we go back to that template. Talking about the template. Talking about the template. Let's even assume on this table that the minimum wage as they are proposing of one million naira will not work is not feasible enough considering the long-term effect now let's go back to sustainable living wage what is the template that you are what is the template that you are advocating for that would not in any way that would not in any way hamper on the living wage that an uh, uh, like like an, an earner now decides to earn if indeed they decide to increase the cost of commodity tomorrow, should we go back to should we go back to a, a, a per hour pay as the case may be, or what do you suggest at this point? Yes, uh, Josh, Josh, you want you want to play a very fast one on me this morning by giving you the variables within the template. Even though I will still give you, don't worry, I will still give you now. When you're talking about this, you look at housing costs in Lagos. What you're also looking at housing costs in Lagos. That of Yanopaja, the river or that of Ikuni. That of Aberonje is even from that of uh, uh, You put out the consideration to be able to determine the minimum, I mean, the, the, the acceptable housing need for government workers in Lagos. You do that one all the right. Then you now pick them box by box. Okay? Even though you are doing that, the basic, the basic will be standard. But every other one, like transportation, uh, feeding, housing, and all that will be varied. I will say that Government will now look at what are the variables that is making housing to be like this in Lagos at this time, travel to be in this area at this time. Then you now look at cost of uh, petrol. Like now in Lagos, petrol is selling for maybe 600 naira, while in Kaduna, Kwara, and all that is selling about 650 to 700. You look at all that. Put them down. Now, any distortion, any distortion 
in all that will also affect the variables that had already been considered. The variables that had already been considered. And to that extent, to that extent, you don't, you don't allow those things to rise. You have to keep them there. So that I said again, you have to have a template that will give you a stable economy. To that extent again, the government will have to be deliberate in stopping, in stopping their disistocratic form of governance. The government will also have to be deliberate in ensuring that policy formulation and execution are as it is, that will be, that will be to the betterment of the people. So, by something, you see, everybody will be happy. Everybody will be happy. You know, there are things some other, other things there that we cannot be discussing All right. on, the, uh, uh, my, on, on the national TV. My last question, my last question to you before my colleague takes over is, when you talk about those variables, I can understand because those are the things that adds a little bit of strain on the average worker. Now, if you tell me that the federal government might decide now to stop either of those um, factors you just mentioned, transportation, and of course the living cost, you know, for accommodation, that might really add a strain to an individual who is a civil servant, is it just policy that would make that not happen, or would there be some sort of financial instrument attached to it? Are we going back to subsidy? Yeah, you, you see, you see, when you look at some of these things that I have mentioned, you're going to see that they are not stable just because the leadership in place are not being sincere with the people. There are been a deliberate connivance of the leadership. When I say the leadership, including traditional, religious, everything, whatever kind of leadership you can think of, against the people, just to keep the people below the earth, for them to have maximum control on them, for them to be able to be diverting them anywhere they want to. Imagine, imagine, imagine the coin of the, of the world of the renowned clergy in this country a few days ago. As regards this government, imagine that. Highly, highly to cross his treatment for the clergy of that statue. Highly to cross. And let me also, let me also appreciate the Sultan of Sokoto that was able to tell Oru Ramitinungu the truth yesterday by saying, yes, they open for you, get to Abuja, that Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians are not happy. And I also appreciate. Uh, uh, my brother, uh, Baby Balano, for saying that it is time for Nigeria to have what we call social revolution. All right. And between you, I mean, one day, one day, I will go to the market and we will not come back. Let's, t let's take a, a few things from your earlier submission. Uh, you did mention that uh, NLC, uh, the labor union, Joe Ajero, uh, that, you know, they've lost credibility. And I must say that it's not the first time we're hearing that. You also mentioned uh, that um, instead of asking for a, a one million naira minimum wage, ask for a sustainable standard living wage, also noted. However, you went ahead to also mention that um, the approach with which the NLC is, you know, uh, trying to get the attention of the federal government is somewhat moribund. Uh, if you were to, say, upgrade your manner of approach to the NLC and the TUC, how would you have them uh, go about their agitations? First of all, we must understand that the NLC and the TUC are, of course, labor organizations, and they are known to agitate for the rights of their members, which in this case are workers in Nigeria. If they, if they uh, threaten to go on strike, it is something that they are known for. So if they continue threatening to go on strike, I'm probably going on strike a couple of times, 
and you know handling matters the way that they are and it's not working which of course led up to your submission this morning how else do you would you recommend that they go about their business Hello, Dr. D, are you there? Okay, I think there's been a break in that uh, connection. Uh, but he did make a lot of points. And I would have wanted him to answer this question because uh, the labor unions globally across the world, they go on strike. It's, they are known for striking and, you know, uh, protesting, carrying placards and moving to the streets. It is just really unfortunate that while our labor unions here might have their own, you know, lapses and challenges. Uh, we also have leadership that don't listen. We must not also take that away uh, until the both ends of the both parties involved in whatever these conversations are come to a point where they have mutual respect for what each other represent and try to pay attention that we might never make progress. Do you have any final words? Josh, yes, yeah, one of those particular um, quality of um, a leader is he or she being very attentive. Mm. You listen to people, you listen to their plight, and you show empathy. And the next thing is you take action. On the part of labor, they have never been listening to the plight of these people. It's always a knee jerk approach. Okay, let us engage them. Mm. Let us have a round table discussion. And at the end of the day, if nothing happens, we we'll go back again to threaten you know, them for protests and all of that. It has always been the, the, the system. And looking at what um, the guy just said, he has always been towing the line of his predecessors. Mm. People who might not be approaching it with the first century technological approach in the way things are supposed to be done, especially at this time. If you really need to improve on the living standard of people, look at those things that you know that add strain and bring up a blueprint such that he, he, he suggested a template that would not in any way affect the living wage of an average earner no matter what is increasing because government will always make sure that there are parameters around those things to keep it at bay but when he is not coming up with that kind of um, system all he thinks of okay if 700 naira per liter is full let us peg the living standard or the the the, the minimum, minimum wage, wage to be one million to be 1 tomorrow million. it gets to one thousand you know wake up from the other side of the bed to say okay let nigeria start earning two million is that how you approach things mm. forgetting the fact that when you increase the cost or maybe the the living wage of an average earner what would the market woman in the in the market do to his Land own price i mean it doesn't make sense so put up something that would always be sustainable no matter how much things gets to be increased it will not affect their living standard. I think right. that should be the best uh, thing. We draw the curtain on that conversation uh, today. Of course, uh, the 14 days ultimatum is still on. Yes, uh, I think we're running. seven days gone now. Uh, so we have seven days more uh, to find out how it, it pans out. Uh, as it unfolds, we'll continue to bring you all the whole details. Mm -hmm.